Welcome to the short overview of automatic model building. In this example, I'm going to be showing you how you can build a predictive model automatically using IBM SPSS Modeler version 15. You can see on the screen an example stream within the SPSS Modeler product. Firstly, I'm going to show you the sample data that we have to work with. Then I'll talk about the outcome that we're trying to actually predict before moving on to building a predictive model automatically. So currently we are connected to two tables within the same database. And the stream shows that we are in fact merging information from demographic information and transactional information about customers, in this case, of an online store. In fact, we can see a preview of the merge data by clicking on the merge node, calling up edit, clicking on preview. And what we'll see is the first 10 records within the merge data. And we can see that the records that are merged include information such as the age of the customer, uh, their gender, whether or not they're married, the number of children they have, and whether or not they've made a purchase in the following product categories, video, audio, toys, books. We've also got information on their average spend, and we've got information on whether or not they've taken up a loyalty card. As it turns out, the loyalty card field is the key field. It's the outcome that we wish to predict. We can take a further look at the data by running the data audit node, which is connected to the merged file. And that gives us some information about all of the individual fields in terms of their distribution. So we can see the age distribution here. Uh, we can see the different regions. And we can see the proportion of married to non-married people. Uh, for the continuous variables, we have uh, minimum, maximum uh, values as, long as, the, as well as the average. We can see the average age is 42. And you'll notice that the little charts along the side here, the sample graphs, are in fact colored by our key target field. That's because we've already indicated in the stream that loyalty is the key field that we wish to predict the outcome of. So the data audit node is a good way for us to get an overview of the data and to get a feel for the range of values that we should expect to see uh, when we're working with the data and doing analysis further on down the line. Because, of course, the sample graphs are colored by the target field, the thing that we're trying to predict our outcome, in this case, whether or not people have a loyalty card, it also gives us some sort of indication as to which fields are likely to play a role uh, within any resultant model. And a good example of that is the spend histogram here, the average spend field. If I double-click on it and expand that chart, we can see that those towards the higher spend categories, towards the right-hand side of the chart, a larger proportion of those in those categories appear to be uh, people who currently hold a loyalty card compared to the, uh, the lower spend uh, categories. That's probably not surprising, but we might expect to see this uh, particular field play a role within any resultant predictive model. And with that in mind, we can move on to actually building the predictive model itself. Just before we get the system to automatically build a predictive model for us, I want to draw your attention towards the partition node. The partition node splits the data into two groups, what's called the training data and the testing data. And basically what happens is that the model is built on the first 50%, the training data, and then is applied to the testing data so that we can estimate how well the model is likely to perform in real life. This is a way for us to create models which are much fairer and more robust. To get the system to automatically build a predictive model for us, all we need to do now is connect the partition node up to the auto classifier. And connecting that, we can immediately see that the auto classifier detects loyalty card as the target field as indicated uh, earlier on in the stream. Now, in terms of what it's actually going to do here, if I draw your attention towards the tab at the bottom, you can see there's lots and lots of different procedures and predictive models within the modeler package itself. Lots of different algorithms. Many of these models are for predicting two or three category outcomes. In this case, we've got two category outcome. Do they have a, a loyalty card, yes or no? So it's gonna run many different types of uh, classification algorithms. And then it's gonna choose the best one for us. So it's gonna save us the trouble of trying to pick one. 
And if we look inside the actual node itself and see what the uh, parameters are uh, available to us within there, we can see here's all the different models that it's going to run. In terms of the model itself and the ones that it's going to choose, it's going to rank them in terms of overall accuracy. We're asking it to retain the top three models, so the best three that it can find. If I hit run at this stage, off it goes and it starts building up to 10 different models. It's going to retain the top three. It's, uh, it's, it goes through each of, the pro, each of the models, ranks them in order, discards the remaining ones, and produces what's called a modeling uh, nugget for us at the end here. And if I look inside the modeling nugget, I'll be able to see which models it's actually chosen, how well they've performed. By clicking in edit, I can see that it's chosen three very good models that are performing very well. The first one's called C5, the next one's called SVM, Support Vector Machines, and the other one is a decision tree called Chade. And I can immediately see that they're very accurate because this little graph here tells me how many times the yes people, the people who did have a loyalty card, were mispredicted as not having a loyalty card, a very small proportion at the time. That's, that's the green section. And vice versa, how many people... How many times those who do not have a loyalty card were mispredicted as having a loyalty card? That's again a very low proportion of time. So in other words, the model is very good at detecting the uh, people who have a loyalty card versus those who do not. And furthermore, we can see that this model is based on those in the testing data set, not in the training data set. So this is the data set which was held back. If we like, we can now look at how we can use this model uh, to score new data, in other words, to identify prospective customers for a loyalty card targeting. So if I want to use the resultant model to select prospective customers for a loyalty card campaign, to make it simple, I'll just make a copy and paste that. And I will attach it to a hidden source node down here, which is actually a source node referring to prospective customers for the campaign. If I look at the customers and the data itself, uh, by previewing it, you'll see that this particular data file, of course, doesn't have a target field uh, associated with it because none of these customers currently have a loyalty card. So we can use the resultant model to identify who's likely to have a loyalty card. And in fact, we can use all three of the models within the uh, nugget itself and get them all to a group vote if you like and take the average score across all of them and what that's going to do is it's going to produce a new field for us which is, indicates whether or not they are predicted to have a loyalty card and also a level of confidence associated with that so in fact what i will do is i will filter out all of the other fields so i'll get rid of all of the the fields which aren't necessary i just need the customer id and i need to have the loyalty card predictions and I can go further than that and say, only select those who are predicted to have a loyalty card. So I can select um, only those cases. And here you can see it's saying, if the loyalty card is equal to yes. And I can even modify that so that the loyalty card is equal to yes. And the score for their likelihood to have a loyalty card is greater than 0 0.75 greater than 75 percent and then preview that to make sure it works you can see that these are the only fields that are going to be pushed out and i can put that back into the database for campaign selection Here I have, I've created within the database a table showing customers who are most likely to accept an offer of a loyalty card. And I've done that by automatically generating not just one model, but three models uh, using IBM SPSS Modeler.